Here we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce Liz Bizarro. Um, some of you who have uh, trained at UDF may see, may have seen her there. She is a trainer that uh, works with Suzanne and Carl, our, our lovely physical trainers. And Liz here is, is a nutritionist. Her focus is uh, on helping our athletes understand how this component of their training is a critical one. All right. And I'm really excited to have her here with us. Uh, so let's give our undivided attention to Liz. Thank you so much, Dan. Thank you everyone for joining me today. Um, just like John said, I, I appreciate um, you being here on this middle of a Saturday weekend afternoon. Um, I hope your days have been going so uh, well so far. Um, I am very excited and honored to be here. Um, I am actually a former three sport athlete myself. Um, so I can appreciate and understand the importance that volleyball plays in your life as a sport, um, in terms of exercise, um, in terms of camaraderie and being on a team. Um, so I want you to know that I've been in your shoes and I just wish I had this guidance when I was, um, when I was your age. Um, so I'm really excited and honored, um, to spend some time with you right now. Um, just to give you a little bit of background on myself, um, I, I have been with Upper Deck as their community coordinator and health coach now for one year. Um, prior to that, I, I was working with them as their health coach um, for several years. Um, while I was working in a marketing job, um, I had actually worked in marketing and the corporate world um, prior to all of this. Um, so I'm 37. So for the last you know 15 years, um, I was juggling a corporate job and um, my health coaching clients. So about 10 years ago, I decided to um, get the certification in holistic health and nutrition. And what that means is, yes, I work with um, many people of all different ages and with various different conditions or goals um, to obviously focus and educate them and guide them in terms of their food. But the food is a major component, but also there's other things that play a role, um, just like John said, excuse me, like your mindset, um, the stress in your life, the relationships that you have, and the role that that plays in your overall health and your day to day. Um, so that is also a big part of, of our approach and what we do. Um, so we'll touch upon that as well. Um, so I have actually been a holistic health coach now for about 10 years. And so it's very, um, it doesn't need to be, nutrition itself doesn't need to be complicated. It doesn't need to be um, really scientific. Um, and that is what I think is really important, um, just to mention before we get started into all of the information that I'm, I'll be sharing is that, you know, Many people think that um, nutrition involves a lot of different things, such as cal counting calories and, you know, all these other um, various types of ways to understand it. But it really can be dubbed down. And so that's another um, really big deal in, in our approach with nutrition is really dubbing it down for you and just having you understand that it's a really um simple way to live as a lifestyle with your a, a good diet but also how it can enhance your performance your athletic performance um your mood your energy and all of that so um you know and like i mentioned i, I am a former athlete three sport athlete one of which was volleyball i played for four years in high school um basketball and softball and i went on to play competitive softball um, and i'm also a former dancer so i really appreciate the movement and exercise and just know that i've been in your shoes um and so i'm just really extra excited to um, be sharing this very important information with you today um, this will be more of a conversation and discussion i'm not going to be sharing a powerpoint presentation or anything like that um, it will be interactive because i think it's important 
for you to know that, um, you know, the questions that I ask, I encourage you to answer them. Of course, you don't have to, but I encourage you um, simply just to be open and honest. And I'm going to kind of gear my conversation towards your answers. And also know that you're not alone in some challenges or some questions that you might have. Um, because oftentimes people don't ask questions because maybe they think or seek information because they think maybe um, it's a silly question. But there's so many of you on this call and I can guarantee you that you are facing perhaps some, some challenges, maybe like low energy in the afternoon that half the people on this call are also facing as well. So that is also why I encourage you to, to feel free to type in um, and, um, you know, interact in that way. So we will be talking, of course, about nutrition for performance and proper nutrition overall. Um, but I also talk about hydration and um, the importance and the role that consuming water plays um, from your on your day to day. And of course, um, the way you move, um, your mood, your energy, we'll talk about. And then at the end, I'm going to share a recipe with you that I think you will love. Um, and it's very simple. Um, and that I think you will enjoy and it will provide you with some energy um, in the afternoon or the morning whenever you need it. So the first question that I would love for you to answer for me is, of course, like I mentioned, we're and everyone knows we're here to talk about food. But if you could share with me perhaps one challenge that you're faced with right now, um, perhaps it's um, like low energy in the afternoon. Maybe you're faced with um, some body image, you know, um, fears. Maybe you're not feeling um, like you understand what is the proper fuel for you um, at night after a workout. But if you could share that with me, um, that would be really helpful. And then what I can share with you as you guys are starting to type is I remember when I was in high school, um, yep, it would be the late night. Um, it was so funny. That was the first the first comment that came through. <clears throat> I would get home from practice and dance and I would have dinner, but then I was doing my work and I was still hungry. So, okay. Oh, these are flooding in. Okay. Um, so low energy, lack of motivation, unhealthy cravings throughout the day. Cravings are a big deal um, and many people face them. And that is simply because um, perhaps something is not present in your meal prior to that. And so I will address that today. Um, best timing to eat, I will also address today. Um, okay, really hard to, for you to get up in the morning. Is that because you're feeling unmotivated or is it because you're tired? because those are two different things as well. There's the low energy, the low energy. Okay, feeling lightheaded in the afternoon, yep. Cravings, see you guys, just by reading these, I hope you guys know that you're not alone in feeling this way. Um, and that's really, really important. Um, and I can guarantee you that a lot of this um, has, to, has to do with um, the food that you're eating or not eating. Um, okay, so someone is struggling with calorie counting and, you know, and I will touch upon this as well. Um, calories are not created equal and I never, ever, ever um, advise any of my clients to count calories because once you understand what food you should be eating, you can just eat it and there's really no reason to count the calories. So um, that is also just a really big um, picture way to think about nutrition. And um, oftentimes it's really hard because it's we're surrounded by um, seeing that information. So we, we can address that as well. Lack of motivation on the weekend, low energy, there we go, the cravings, the dehydration. Okay, so we, as you can see, there's a lot of common themes here, right? Um, headaches, headaches is um, probably, well, obviously linked to um, some of the foods we eat, but oftentimes for it's linked to dehydration. So we'll touch upon that. Snacking, yep. Um, let's see, eating a balanced meal, and I will obviously go over that today. Um, different Difference between calorie counting and intuitive eating, okay? That's very, um, very interesting. And I can, again, I will address the calorie counting because um, no one should be calorie counting. It, we should not be living that way. Um, and so I will, after today, hope you will walk away with understanding that, that, that that's just not, not necessary. 
um, all day with a mask on. I feel you. I feel you on that. Um, it's not easy for any of us. We will get back to normal one day. I'm going to keep the faith. Keep the faith. Um, okay, as a vegan, I worry about getting all the nutrients I need. Okay, yep, we can talk about that as well. A lot of different topics here, guys. I just hope you guys know that these struggles are not, um, you are not isolated in these struggles. So we are going to address um, most of this today. Of course, I only have one hour, um, but just know I'm a resource. If, if for some reason I don't cover something today that you're interested in, um, John will share your email with, uh, my email with you. Um, I am here for you. Um, I, I actually currently work with one of the NEBBC NA volleyball players who inspires me every time I, I, I meet with her. So just know that, that I'm here. Um, this is really, really helpful. Um, best food before and after playing. I'm absolutely going to address that. Not sleeping at night because I'm hungry, even if I ate a big dinner. So that will go back to probably, you know, we would have to address what you ate earlier in the day because it's not just that one meal. It's, it's what you're eating day after day um, and how you're fueling your body and what's missing, um, really what nutrients are missing. Sleeping lightly, not sleeping enough. Okay. Thank you. Being really tired in the middle of the day and using caffeine to feel energized again. Thank you, guys. Thank you for being so open and honest and transparent. Um, this is um, all really, really important issues that we're, we're going to address today. So um, thank you. I'm going to take all that feedback and start sharing some information um, with you guys. So, um, you know, just so you know, and I know I've said it, but all of everything that you mentioned really goes back to the fuel, um, the fuel that we give our body. And where do we get that fuel? It's obviously from the food on our plate. Of course, there are other other factors going on, like um, the pandemic and everything that's going on with our mental health right now. Um, that plays a major role in the decisions we make in terms of what food we're eating or what food we're reaching for, or how we're sleeping. But um, all of this is really um, affected and can be helped by the food and the hydration that we give our bodies. Our bodies are so smart. So if we give it what it needs, it will feel better. Um, it will function better. So um, I also want to reiterate that um, eating well, and I shared this with um, with my with my client who's an NABBC player this week. It it and it may sound hokey, but it's not. But eating well is really an act of self care and self love, right? So it's like you, um, it's really not, a, and it's about how it makes you feel, and of course how it makes you perform in at in in the sports and practice and games and all of that. But uh, um, if you can keep that in the back of your mind when you're eating, um, and just it goes back to being able to fuel your body. So we are going to discuss the basics, um, go into the discussing the basics that should be on your plate. And that is um, protein, carbs, and fat. And so I'm going to take a little time to dive into each of those food groups and what it does, um, what it does for you, what it does for your body, and how you can include that in each of your meals. Um, so if you do want to take notes, feel free. Um, but this, the chunk of this part will be me sharing the, um, this information with you. So, um, you know, we, you as growing athletes, um, you know, ideally we should have three meals a day. You guys are so active. Um, you guys are practicing and you guys are playing games and you are working out. Um, having snacks in between your meals are just fine. And I will also talk about, I will get into that as well. But in your three meals, um, you know, the meals are important because they provide you with consistent energy um, and they keep your blood sugar level um, leveled. Um, you don't want it going up and down all day because that's where you get tired, your energy goes down, um, and you start to get cravings, and they're unhealthy cravings. So if we have what we're supposed to have in our meals, and if you get hungry in between, especially like before practice, absolutely you should have a snack. Um, but um, the, the main idea is to have those three meals, and then if you need them, the snacks in between. So protein 
is um, one of the most essential building blocks of everything in our body. Um, also, I just want to just want to say, if you guys do have any questions, um, please, um, if you could save them for the end, we can go over them. And then, of course, like I mentioned, uh, I am available um, whenever you need me if you have any other questions afterwards. Um, so protein is one of the most essential building blocks of nearly everything in our body. So it's vital for every single function that our body um, that our body uses and what we do. Um, our bodies need protein to stay healthy and to work the way it should. Like I said, it's it's so smart. It's like a it's like a system. It's like a computer. And so if you give it what it needs, it's going to feel good and it's going to perform its best. Um, and there are more than over like. 10,000 types of, you know, different proteins that you can get. Um, adequate protein, though, is especially important for athletes because one of its primary functions is to build and repair muscle tissue. So, um, you know, although eating protein doesn't necessarily build muscle on its own, the presence of protein in, in your eating pattern is very important. So I always share that your meals really should be based around your protein. Um, and I'll touch upon like um, a mouth and all of that as we as we go on. Um, and so when you are exercising, and I'm sure you know this, and maybe you don't, but um, when you're exercising, such as lifting weights or you're running, um, some of your muscle cells actually break down. So the protein from food helps repair the damage from the and, and damage in the sense that it's breaking down. Um, it's, it helps it repair it from exercising and builds more muscle to help you become stronger. Um, protein also fuels your body with energy and carries oxygen through your body and the blood. So it plays a, a critical role in your in your body. Um, and as I shared, you know, with your blood sugar level, if you're lacking protein um, throughout your day, you're going to be tired. You're going to have those cravings. So um, it really is a critical piece of the puzzle. Um, and it also, you know, just like all the other healthy foods that we'll discuss, it boosts your immunity. And obviously, excuse me, our immunity is a top priority at this point in our life. It should always be a top priority. But with COVID and everything going on, um, I just, you know, think it's important to mention that as well. Um, and so there are two types of proteins. There's animal and animal-based and plant-based. And for us, um, we are carnivores, so we should be eating um, animal protein. So that's anything like chicken or beef, or pork, fish, eggs, shrimp, any any type of fish, anything that comes from a living organism. Um, and that's really the complete source of protein for our bodies. Um, and so. Like I said, we are carnivores and we should be eating meat. And, and you know, for those who touched upon, um, who mentioned, excuse me, that you're vegan or, or vegetarian, we can talk more about that. But it really is, and, and I don't know if you, um, if that's by choice or for a health issue, um, but, you know, animal protein, if you could get it in, is, is really, really important. Um, and you're probably wondering, okay, well, how much protein? Um, so like I mentioned, the meals that you have should be based around it. So the protein should be the biggest part, part of your meal. It should be present at every meal. Um, the simple equation that we tell everyone is if you take your body weight and cut it in half for the day, that's the number of grams you should have each day. Do I expect anyone to be counting the grams of their um, of their protein, no, that's really not like necessarily. I don't want you being worried about the exact number of grams by any means. But to give you some perspective, um, a chicken breast has about thirty grams of protein, right? So if you weigh, let's just say, one hundred and twenty pounds, and you cut that in half, that's sixty grams of protein a day. Um, so if you have a chicken breast with lunch and you have a chicken breast with dinner you're getting um, a good amount of protein in. Um, eggs, I'm sure a lot of you eat eggs. Um, and if you don't, I encourage you to um, add them into your into your meals. You can have eggs for dinner, you can have eggs for breakfast or lunch, but in whichever way you choose to eat it, of course. But one egg has 
about seven grams of protein in it. So if you, um, you know, think about that and you're having, you know, a few, maybe you're only having one egg for breakfast, that's probably not enough. You should increase that to two to three, um, depending on your weight, of course, maybe four, four eggs um, to, with breakfast. Um, I also really encourage you to eat the whole egg because the yolk has the healthy fat and all these amazing nutrients and minerals. Um, you know, oftentimes people just eat the egg whites um, for health issues or, you know, sometimes not health issues, but some people believe that. And the, and the old way of thinking was that the cholesterol in the yolk is not not good for those with high cholesterol, but it is it is truly um a nutrient um, powerhouse, those yolks. So I re really encourage you to eat the, the full egg. Um, the other really important thing about protein is that you're going to want to make sure you have that after a workout, like I mentioned, or after a game for the muscle recovery. Your body needs the protein. Um, of course, you can have some beforehand, but it's critical for having that afterwards. So, um, you know, let's say you have practice at 3.30 in the afternoon and you go home, um, you know, and you have your dinner, but you're not eating for like four hours later. Um, you should really eat within the two hours after your workout um, to ensure that your body is getting what it needs in that sufficient amount of time, and it should absolutely include a protein. Um, I will talk about what to eat before um, your workout um, as we get into that into that food group, um, which is coming up next, um, which is carbs. And so at each meal, you're gonna want a protein, and at each meal, you're gonna want some carbs. And there are, I'm not sure if you have heard of simple and complex carbs, but I like to consider them and we like to talk to them about healthy carbs and unhealthy carbs. So carbs, believe it or not, are critical to our survival, critical to our survival. And they get, the word itself gets a bad, bad rep. Um, but there are so many healthy carbs that we can and should be eating with our meals. Um, they are a quick burning fuel. So because they are quick burning fuel, we want them to have them especially before we have our workout or before we play our game because they give us that quick, um, it's a quick source of energy for us and our bodies are able to use it and burn it for um, during your exercise and during your game. So, um, Carbohydrates. The ones that you should have are the fruits and vegetables. So fruits and vegetables are considered carbs, and um, I know many of you may not may not realize that. Um, but when you consume the other carbs that are not as that are not healthy or unhealthy, um, such as like donuts, let's just say, or um, white bread all the time, right? Um, they're stored. It's it's they're not. Um, burn for fuel necessarily and they'll get stored in our body as let's let we like to say they're stored in our body as fat and this is in no way um a conversation about weight right now and i don't want that of course to be top of mind for you but when you're eating foods that aren't the healthiest that for you such as unhealthy carbs they they will be stored as fat um so the wrong type of of um, carbohydrates, the unhealthy kinds, or those that are processed baked goods, um, you know, the white breads, um, you know, crackers, you know, processed crackers. What we want to focus on are fruits and vegetables. Any fruits and vegetables are amazing and healthy for you, regardless of the sugar content. Um, it, it, you know, they, they, they're grown in the ground. They're, they're not processed in a factory like, um, like a cracker, right? So that is really important um, to understand. And you're probably wondering and, and thinking inside your head, what about what about whole grains, right? Whole grains are okay. Um, they are, you know, such as like brown rice or quinoa, um, you know, those whole grains in that nature are fine and good to have. Um, do we want to be eating them at every meal every day? Not necessarily, um, but they are important um, for you, especially as active growing athletes um, to have, you can have them, they are okay. Um, but 
you know, we, it's not something we want to get used to at having a, at every single meal. Um, the carbs we want to focus on are as a fruit or a vegetable or both. Um, the grain people often think like a bagel, um, is what keeps you full, but it's not, it's not what's keeping you full. It's the protein that's keeping you full and the healthy fats that are keeping you full. So, um, it's, it's really important to understand that. So these carbs are really optimal to eat before you work out or before your practice. I would have, I would encourage you to have, um, you know, you can have an apple with peanut butter. Um, you know, you can have a half of a, of a turkey sandwich on, on whole grain bread with, um, you know, um, a nut bar, um, you know, and you can have, you know, carrots and hummus and, and that along with other things. Um, that is what's going to give you your fuel for your workout. Last piece of the puzzle are our healthy fats. And these are actually my favorite um, food group to, to discuss because people don't want to hear the word fat and they get very intimidated by that. Um, but fat allows our bodies to actually absorb the nutrients in what we're in what we're eating um so it's really important that you hear me loud and clear on that that healthy fats are really vital for our um, bodies to function because it helps our bodies absorb what it needs um so to just put it into um its own categories right so we we um, give our bodies the carbs before, let's say a worker, it's that that's the initial energy. The protein that we get afterwards helps draw um, that energy out and the, the fat and the final piece kind of seals it all together. And that's actually what uh, helps us remain full as well. And it actually slows down our digestive system so we don't crash. Um, so you have your protein, you have your healthy carbs, and you have your fat. And you're probably asking, okay, well, what, what's a healthy fat? What's considered a healthy fat? Um, healthy fats are anything from nuts to nut butters to olives, avocados, um, fatty fish, if you like fish, um, sardines, you know, um, I don't know if not necessarily you're eating sardines, but other fatty fishes are like um, salmon is really good for, for you. Um, salmon is obviously a protein as well, um, but you'll get the, the healthy fat from that. Um, also butter. I know sometimes people are like, well, butter is, is butter good for you? And actually butter, good quality butter, um, can serve as your healthy fat in your meals. Um, so that's really important to understand. So we're probably like, okay, well, what if I don't have, you know, what if I don't want to have, or I don't have nuts, um, or I don't have um, avocado or olives? Um, I often tell my clients, and especially active athletes, to keep some sort of like nut bar um, in your book bag, um, such as like the Lara bars are really good, the Kind bars are really good, um, because I'm sure also at school, if you're in school and you're, and you're getting lunch from school, that healthy fat might not be available. Um, so um, having those bars handy um, will be really, really critical. Um, so, that is really the nut and bolts of, of proper eating. You want to have your protein and your animal protein. If you're not eating animal protein, um, you can get your proteins from um, beans and legumes and lentils and tofu um, and that those types of food in that nature. Um, the second piece are the carbs. So you're going to always want a, a fruit or a vegetable. And then the third piece is the healthy fat. Um, and again, if that healthy fat, because people struggle with the healthy fat and getting that, um, having that, um, I like to, when I have my meals, sometimes um, you're like thinking, okay, well, chicken and Brussels sprouts or broccoli, well, what, what should I do for my healthy fat? I, I might make, I might make, or I have um, nut bars at home and I kind of eat it as my dessert and then I get it in and it gives me that, um, that complete meal. Um, so that is really the spiel of your meals. 
Um, so with all that being said, I'm wondering if you can share your thoughts or concerns with me in terms of um, what your main priority would be now. What do you think you would struggle with now, knowing that you have um, would need those three components on your plate for each of your meals? Hey there, Liz. Hey. Uh, we've had a good number of questions being asked, so I can okay. I can act as like a moderator. Sure. I just kind of present some questions to you, if you don't mind. Okay. Yes. Uh, a big question was um, if you can't like consume nuts or if you can't consume, like if you have dietary restrictions, do you have any sure. um, suggestions for those folks? Sure. So you can, I don't know if you like olives or avocado or guacamole. Um, that's all really good. Like if you have, um, if you're eating chicken or fish or whatever you're eating, if you drizzle olive oil on that or you're having like your salad and you want to put olives on it, avocado. Um, those are two other really good ways to get that in is additionally um, seeds, right? So sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, um, the seeds um, can also provide that for you as well. Fantastic. I love the suggestion of olive oil. Man, I love my but, olive oil. Yes, me Just too. Butter, whatever I'm eating. And um, the butter too, the butter too, don't forget. Butter is fantastic. Another question that came in was that in terms of timing for sure. eating those healthy fats, do you have a suggestion for that? Um, is it timing specific to the healthy fats or just timing in general? Uh, for the specific to healthy fats. I think you covered the one for protein and covered the one for carbs. Uh, uh, we had a sure. question coming about timing for healthy fats. Sure. So you're going to want that with your meal. So with your breakfast, with your lunch and your dinner. Um, so let's say for breakfast, you have a couple of eggs, a half of an English muffin, um, a piece of, um, let's say an apple, that's your carb. Dip it in some peanut butter if you can have it, peanut butter, almond butter. Um, and there you go. You have your healthy fat and you're good. So you're going to want to eat it kind of as your meal or as your snack together. You're not going to want to have an apple and then an hour later have um, some nuts because that is when, when you're not pairing them together, that's when your blood sugar level spikes and dips and you get the cravings and you're tired. So it's, 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 it's providing that and eating that together as a meal, more or less. Fantastic. So it sounds like pairing your healthy fats with your proteins and carbs is the best way to kind of consolidate. Absolutely. Those. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a few more questions. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're speaking about carbs and we had some folks ask questions about pasta. Sure. Uh, and non-processed bread and potatoes. What do you, what do you think? What are your thoughts sure. on those? Sure. So potatoes, sweet potatoes, um, regular potatoes are fine. They're a root vegetable. Um, go for it. Um, I'm never going to tell you not to eat pasta macaroni, um, but um, pasta is a processed carbohydrate, right? However, you guys have to remember you are growing um, athletes. Like you, it's okay to have a bowl of pasta. Um, it's not going to make you gain weight. It's not going to really inhibit your athletic skills or any. It's when you have the pasta every day for lunch, right? So I was going to get into it um, in a couple of minutes, but um, I like to encourage what we call this 80-20 rule, right? 80% of the time you should be eating um, really well or trying to eat your best with the proteins, the carbs, the healthy carbs and the healthy fats. If you want a bowl of pasta, um, meatballs or not, what you go for it. You should have it. The twenty, the other twenty percent of the time, you're good. Um, and that, if you dub, if you do the math in terms of the number of meals you eat a month, it's like four or five meals a week at least. Um, and those carbs, you know. Like I said, you guys are. Um, if you have the if you have the pasta, I encourage you to have some meatballs with it or meat with it, so you're getting that protein in, right? Um, and then, of course, maybe you have a salad or a piece of fruit afterwards, so you get that fruit in or that other healthy um, carbohydrate in. Hope that's helpful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, we have another uh, kind of theme that's been emerging in the in the chat is time. And like sure. having time to prepare meals, having yeah. time to uh, kind of make sure that you're eating in this in this balanced way. Uh, and I've heard you say several times, snacks, like getting those snacks in strategic places is a big yeah. component to like being able to have these things. But I just wonder if you can share some insight 
uh, into how do you factor in that time crunch? Because a lot of our, our students are, are incredibly intelligent and they have a challenging schedule at school. Yes. So they, they, they're mentioning the, the time crunch. So do you have any advice for that? Yes. So, um, and you know, that is a challenge being in school and not being able to probably even have lunch, like with the masks and everything, right? You can't even have a snack. Um, so that is why your meal, especially your breakfast is so critical to make sure that you eat the right, um, balanced meal at breakfast. Um, in terms of having the snack and I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know what the rules are at school. I don't believe they're able to have snacks, right? They probably just have to have breakfast and then yeah, I see you guys shaking your head. No. So it is critical that you get your breakfast in, whether that means, um, getting up 10, 15 minutes earlier, you should do that. It will set you up for your day in such a better, healthier way that you won't understand until you actually do it. Um, so make sure you have um, your your breakfast, a balanced meal with breakfast, and that way it'll hold you over to lunch. Hopefully, that is the goal. Um, and then the snacks, um, yes, bonza pasta. I see that. Um, I also love bonza pasta. Um, it's high in protein, it's made from chickpeas, and it's delicious. And so I definitely make that in our house. Um, but that breakfast piece is very important. If you're eating the right meals, you should be able to go at least five hours without eating. Okay, if you're hungry in between, you got to look at your meal before and say, okay, what was I missing? Was I missing my healthy fat? Did I not have enough protein? Um, that is something that you'll have to look at as well. Um, in terms of the snack, though, in the afternoon, I know that's really important for you guys, um, especially before practice. I encourage you to have that. And that just means being prepared and bringing it to school if you can and packing that. So maybe that's <clears throat> um, another half, like I said, Perhaps it's, a, perhaps it's a half of a turkey sandwich on whole grain bread, let's just say, with an apple and um, some nuts or like a nut bar, like I said. Um, I encourage you to try those nut bars. There's so many out there. There's too many out there. But Lara bars are really good. Um, they are. There's barely any ingredients in them, and that's how I, I, I would love for you guys to just kind of um, – don't look at the calories. Just look at kind of the ingredients. If there is a laundry list of ingredients, you kind of know it's like processed and like there's a lot going on there. Lara Bars has a couple ingredients and they're delicious and there are so many different flavors that I encourage you to try those. Um, they're sold everywhere. You can find them everywhere. I love Lara Bars. Yeah. I stock them in my car. I stock yeah. them in my home. Yes. We should, we should get a, like a sponsorship. But anyway, um, <laughs> Uh, I have a, another theme here. Uh, a lot of our, our athletes are asking questions about kind of the timing of meals. Sure. As well as uh, what to eat for breakfast. It sounds like there's a struggle about breakfast right now. Like sure. what kind of items should people be consuming for breakfast to make sure that they get their day started uh, in a fashion that's going to support them throughout the day? Sure. I love that. Um, I'll start with breakfast. Breakfast, um, I always encourage people to have eggs. Eggs are a powerhouse of protein. You can eat them whatever way you want, whether they're scrambled, whether they're fried, whether you make, um, a, you know, make a quiche on Sunday and you have it in your fridge and all you have to do is cut it and heat it up. It's, you're, it's convenient. Um, it's right there with you. Um, over easy. Yes, I love mine runny. Um, there's your protein. Um, then you can have, you know, you can have um, a fruit or a vegetable. If you like an omelet, you can throw whatever veggies you want in there, onions, tomatoes, mushrooms. I don't know what you like. Whatever you like, you can throw it in there. If you don't want an omelet, you just want the eggs, have, um, you know, three or four eggs, bacon and sausage or smoked salmon, all good. That's more protein. Add it on. Um, and then you want the, the carb, the healthy carb, which either is going to be the veggie, like I said, or a piece of fruit, right? A banana, an apple, strawberries, blueberries, whatever fruit you like. And then if you want to dip it in nut butter or you just want to grab a handful of nuts that you like or seeds or avocado, if you're not eating nuts, you can throw an avocado on your egg. And if you haven't tried that yet, I really encourage you to try it. It's delicious. Um, you can do that. Um, you can also do, um, you know, a whole grain, half of a whole grain, you know, bread. I'm sure there's 
bread is very processed. Let's we all know that. But if you can find um, a bread that's whole grain, um, the Ezekiel bread. I don't know if you guys have heard of Ezekiel bread. Um, they sell it fresh or in the freezer, and it's really it's sprouted and it's very good for you and it tastes really good. I mean, you can toast it, you can spread a little peanut butter on it if you want um, and have your eggs and an apple. Like that's a great, that's a great breakfast. If you're not eating eggs and you don't eat eggs because a lot of people don't eat eggs or they don't prefer eggs, this might sound like a silly concept, but it works um, having leftovers for breakfast. So let's say you had grilled chicken for dinner and um, whatever else you had on the side. Let's say you had grilled chicken and broccoli. You could have that for breakfast. There is nothing wrong with that. It's just your mind feeling like, oh, that's silly. That was that was dinner before. But you can have that for breakfast if you don't prefer eggs. Um, so maybe check that out. And then the timing, like you asked John and everyone else, um, like I said, it's, it's spacing it out. So let's go backwards. What time do you eat lunch? Let's say you eat lunch at noon, right? So five hours prior to noon, you should pro you should have your breakfast around seven. I, I think high schoolers are probably starting around that time. Oh my gosh. I'm like, dating myself, but I don't remember. I don't remember what time the start of your homeroom starts, but um, move it backwards so that, um, oh, Dave's 21 whole grain, yes, is also a very good suggestion. Thank you, um, Lilani, I think, yes. Um, so um, yes, I would work backwards from when you eat lunch in school and have that be five hours prior. No, there's a lot of questions coming in. Um, any other redundant questions, John, or should? I think we've covered most of them. Okay. Um, so you can keep going forward and I'll monitor and then and kind okay. of compile the list. Thank you, I appreciate it. Um, okay, so um, yeah, so hydration is obviously the next um, very, very important, important subject that I can't wait to talk about. So hydration. It's very simple formula. Again, you take half your body weight, you take your body weight, you divide it in half, and that's the amount of fluid ounces you should have every day. Um, so I like this, I have this, um, my water that I take with me wherever I go, when I'm driving in my car, when I'm watching my son play baseball, when, you know, I'm at work. Find a water bottle, and I know and I feel for you guys, really, that I don't think you're even allowed to drink during class, right, because of your masks and everything. It's really sad. It's really sad to me um, that you cannot do that. Um, but find a water bottle. I encourage you to find not even like a pull and spring bottle, but go out. At, you know, go out and buy, I see uh, Allison has her, I see you, Allison. Um, and I love that color. That's one of my favorite colors. Find a water bottle that you like, honestly, like that, that feels good in your hand. I know that sounds kind of strange, but um, do that. Find one that, a color that you like and fill it with water. Um, if water is bland for you, you can add lemon, lime, you can add any kind of fruit, cucumber, mint, whatever, whatever tastes that you like, um, you can add to your water. It's totally fine. But just keep in mind, um, you know, half of your body weight. So half of my body weight is over two of these. So I have to drink. I should be drinking two over two of these a day. Now, with you guys exercising and having practice and games, you could get a lot in during your practice and your game because you're just naturally moving and you're thirsty. So that's important, but you got to focus on the first half of your day too, because if you're, if you're going to be tired, I'm sorry, if you're going to be dehydrated, it will make you tired. It will make you moody. It could give you headaches. So I would really focus, um, focus on the, the water and half your body weight. Um, I see some questions coming in. Seltzer water is fine. Seltzer water is good. Tea is good um, if you're drinking tea. Um, and let's see, carbonated drinks. Yeah, so the seltzer water, like I said, is great. Um, so yeah, I don't know, go on a little shopping spree today or tomorrow and go find yourself a water bottle that you love. And I promise you, if you just take it with you, you'll have it there when you're thirsty, you're gonna drink. It's if you don't have it there and you're like, I'm thirsty and three hours goes by and you don't drink something, that's, that's not good at all. 
Um, the lemon water, thank you, Lindsay. Yep, lemon water is um, so good for you. Lemons nat naturally detoxify and take your toxins out of your body. So it just is another health benefit if you like lemons, um, if you add them to your water. Um, so that's water. Um, I mean, Liz, I got a question, uh, a couple of questions about sourdough bread. What about sourdough bread? What are your, what are your thoughts on that? Sourdough is uh, like, like, like from a bakery sourdough bread, I guess I'm, I'm assuming that um, that would be considered like a carb that you don't necessarily want. It's not, it's not, a, it's not the best choice. But like I said, I don't want you guys to um, feel like you can never have that at all. This is a lifestyle, right? Like this isn't a diet at all. You can have that. Um, it's not the best choice in terms of nutrients. Um, but I would go with more of a whole grain or um, the sprouted bread like we discussed. Gotcha. So it sounds like the 80-20 rule is something that you should really kind of consider here. Yes. If you really want to kind of give yourself an understanding that you're fueling your body, like Kat just mentioned, you're fueling your body, but you're, we're not limiting anything that you can enjoy. Um, yeah. Just make sure it's, it's, it's in concert with that really hard reflection on you are an athlete and we're trying to make sure that we have that fuel so we can, we can perform at our peak. Absolutely. Absolutely. You want the fuel for energy. You want to perform well. Um, you want, um, you don't want to be hungry, right. Or thirsty or hungry during your games or practice because then your energy level will drop. Um, but yes, think about, like I said, from the beginning, like, eating to fuel your body and eating is, is a form of self care. It's taking care of your body. Your body is so smart. And if you give it what you, it needs, um, I can guarantee you, you will feel the benefits of it on and off the court, um, in various ways. Um, and I know we have, um, just like a handful of minutes left, but what I did want to share with you and John's going to send the recipe afterwards, um, is a recipe for what I like to call energy balls. Um, you can make them. They're simple. They're delicious. Um, you can have them. I think, you know, you, if they're made, you can have them with your breakfast, right? They'll, they're kind of considered, there's some protein in there too, but I would consider them more of like a healthy fat because of the nut butter that's in there. Um, or you can have it before practice, right? With, um, fruit and veggies or your half of sandwich or whatever. Um, I see some, um, some recipes coming in, but th this one in particular has five ingredients. So it has, um, and John just put it in there so you'll have it, but it has two thirds a cup of creamy nut butter. So you can have um, peanut butter, almond butter. I don't know if anyone's ever tried sunflower seed butter. It's delicious. Um, that is like the two thirds of that. And then you add either dark chocolate, half a cup of either dark chocolate or semi-sweet chocolate chips. Um, I, <coughs> excuse me, there is this brand it's called Enjoy Life. Um, they have their chocolate chips are like natural, all natural ingredients. They're they don't have like soy or dairy or anything like that. Um, but they taste delicious and they taste to me better than the regular like toll toll house ones. But if that's what you have, by all means, you can add those in. It's okay. It's just a half a cup of those. Um, a cup of old fashioned oats. You're not gonna want. Um, instant oats or instant oatmeal. Actually, the instant oatmeal is completely processed, so you don't ever want to eat the instant. I would always encourage you, if you're going to have oatmeal, to have um, old-fashioned rolled or rolled oats. Um, and I just want to touch upon the oatmeal because I think I saw a question coming in earlier. If you're going to have oatmeal, I would not have oatmeal alone as a meal. Think about what I told you and what I explained. You want the protein, the animal protein, the carbohydrate, and the fat. If you're going to have oatmeal for breakfast, please include an egg, an apple, and like a handful of nuts. Um, oatmeal alone will not give you what you need um, in terms of the nutrients and to provide you with energy because those carbs are not what you want to have alone ever. It'll just make you whoop, your sugar level um, spike and then dip and you will be tired. It will not provide you with what you need. Um, but you can have it, of course, paired with other things. 
and what you should have. Um, and then the last ingredient, oh, two more ingredients is either ground flaxseed or chia seed. And those provide fiber for your body, which is really important. Um, as well as um, protein, you can do hemp seeds. I don't know if you've heard of hemp seeds. Hemp is a hemp is a plant-based protein. Um, so one of those um, flax seeds, chia seeds, hemp seeds, really, really great for you. Um, and then two tablespoons of honey. And you literally just mix it together. You put it in the fridge for like a half an hour and then you make them into, into balls and you enjoy them. They are delicious. Um, so I see a question, when do you recommend we eat these? So like I said, you can have them like with your breakfast. Um, you can have them with your as part of your snack before your practice or before your game. Um, you can have them after dinner as like a dessert because they're a little bit sweet, but not, not, um, not a lot of, um, you know, not processed sugar, white sugar. I see, I see cat, um, ladies asking about losing fat and gaining muscle. Sorry, I don't know if that was a, was that a question for me, Kat? I'm not sure. I think uh, Kat's just commenting on a, on a couple okay. of young ladies asking about like how you balance gaining muscle versus losing fat. And uh, I think she's just trying to really guide our athletes to understand if we're trying to be the peak performers, your body will take care of itself as long as you're giving it the fuel that you need. You've mentioned several times yeah. that your body is so smart um, and we just need to fuel it and fuel yeah. it. And the way that our athletes train more fuel is better. Like, yes. we're just gonna get stronger. And, and I can't reiterate enough, when you, if you question what you're eating, go back to the three buckets, a protein, a healthy carb, and a fat. If that is present at your meals, you have a complete meal. And just remember what I said about the amount of protein that you should have, right? So it should be based around that protein, and then you have a vegetable or fruit, and then the healthy fat along with it. Um, that is what, that is what I always reiterate. You have three check boxes. If you can check them off at each meal, you are golden. Um, okay. So Anyone else have any questions you wanna throw in the chat? And we ask Liz right before she goes. Are there any foods that help with weight loss? So that's a really loaded question. Um, when I work with my clients about weight loss, it's um, really looking at each of their meals um, individually and um, seeing what's missing or what's in excess, right? So you, you're not going to eat a certain food to lose weight. It's eating right. It's eating right. So let's say I would have to I would have to look at your meals for a day. Um, and this is what I work on with my clients with. They keep a food journal. And I see what they're eating each day. And then I go back and I meet with them and I'll say, okay, we need to get more protein in or you're missing a, missing a healthy fat or you're having um, a few too many unhealthy carbs. Let's, let's pare that down. Um, it's really not eat that, eat this, not that. It's really individualized by what you're doing each day. So dairy, dairy. I, oh, I didn't touch upon dairy. Um, do you mind if I answer that? I know our time is up. Go for it. Okay. They're here for you. They can go as long as you want. So. Okay. okay, great. Um, dairy is actually considered a carb, believe it or not, and a carb that we actually don't want to have. Um, dairy is a huge business, huge, huge, huge business. Milk does the body good. Um, they market it as a protein. Yes, there's protein in there. I am not denying that at all. Um, and I'm specifically talking about like, like milk, right, right now. Um, we are not meant to drink milk from another mammal, period. We're not. So dairy um, should be limited really and truly. And yes, that goes for cheese too. But, excuse me, um, cottage cheese, yogurt, um, I, I'm sure, you know, having that every once in a while is okay. But I, if you're drinking or having a lot of dairy in your, that's currently present in your um, meals, I would really try to cut back on that. And without knowing what you're having it with, 
So another really important um, way to help someone with what they're eating is I like to add something in to help crowd out what you shouldn't have. So let's say you're drinking a cup of a cup, let's just say a glass of milk with your dinner. I would try, encourage you to try to replace that with um, a glass of water with lemon um, or figure out a way to um, satisfy what you're having to kind of crowd crowd that out. So dairy in the milk sense and the cheese even um, isn't really something that we want to have um, often. Um, but like I mentioned, like if you're having some yogurt, have the full fat yogurt. Hear me loud and clear. Have the full fat yogurt. Because when you're eating the 0% fat, these companies are removing the fat and they're adding sugar. And sugar is, the, sugar is not what we want. Sugar is the devil. So a lot of these foods that they remove the fat, they're adding sugar to make it taste good. Have the full fat. I'd rather, have, rather you have the full fat um, product. Thank you for that. You're welcome. An emphatic uh, response. Yes. So dessert. Yeah. yeah. So that goes back to like the indulgences that we were talking about, like the 80-20 rule, right? So let's just say um, if you do the math, there's like 90 meals in a day and 80% of that you want to do your best. 20% um, of that you can indulge. I don't, I don't like calling them cheat meals. I don't like calling them treats because then that feels like you don't like deserve it or you shouldn't have it or cheating on a meal is like, so guilt provoking to me. So consider it like an indulgence and enjoy it. Um, and 20% of the time is like four to five times a week. So if you want to have dessert, um, I mean, I can send along or if you guys have questions on healthy desserts, I have plenty of recipes. Um, but I, I, you know, there's, it's everything in my, not everything, but this is a lifestyle, right, guys? I would never tell you never to have dessert. Um, that would be foolish of me. Um, but if you could um, get into the mindset of how is this going to make me feel and is this going to fuel my body, I guarantee you, you will probably have less dessert um, than you might desire at this time. Um, but I am, I have a wealth of recipes um, for like healthier baked goods. I'm a huge baker. Um, just know I'm a resource, please. Um, and if you, if you have additional questions, I, I am here to help. So. so I'll just put your email address in the chat. I'll probably do it a couple more times, Liz, so sure. some folks have it. Um, if you have recipes to share, I don't mind uh, creating recipe cards like the one we have for uh, for the energy balls that you sent. Sure. Um, and we can definitely kind of make like a little recipe book. That'd be cool. Um, yeah, we but, can, uh, yeah, we can talk offline about that, whatever you think would be helpful. Um, I'd be happy. I just, I know I don't want you, um, I want... I want food and nutrition to be um, like not a challenge for you guys. And I know that's that's a hard, might be a hard concept, but um, really think about, it goes back to, and we've said it so many times, it's fueling your body. What makes you feel good? How are you gonna feel afterwards? And I, and I do hope, um, I really hope that this um, kind of sheds some light in terms of how you shouldn't eliminate one thing one type of food from your diet always. I mean, this is a lifestyle, right? Um, I could never imagine. I eat pizza once a week. I am a health coach and I eat pizza once a week. I love pizza. I am never not going to eat pizza once a week. I will have, make sure I have a protein with it and a carb and a healthy carb and um, a healthy fat, but I'm going to eat my pizza. Mm -hmm. And you should remember that. Um, this is not like, it shouldn't be deprivation. It should be something you enjoy. And, you know, this is, this might be new for a lot of you guys. So um, be patient with yourself. Um, you know, give some different comp food combinations a try um, and see how you feel from it.